modifying a 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive. This is part 16 and it's called Waterworks. This miniature steam locomotive currently has two water pumps fitted. One of them is the hand pump in the side tank and the other pump is a crosshead driven pump which is mounted in between the frames and as the name suggests it's driven from the crosshead. Originally the piping arrangement to combine the output of the hand pump and the crosshead pump was diabolical. I'm going to try and improve upon the original arrangement. First of all though, I sat down and thought about it for a while. I needed both the hand pump and the crosshead pump to deliver the water at the same side. I've just shown this clip but I thought I'd show it again. And no, I'm not making a trombone. This is the way that I made it so that I could get both of the water feeds from the same side. And after silver soldering the union on the other end, I end up with pump feeds that are both at the same side and the same length. I'm just going to move on to something else momentarily. I forgot about this. This is the blower pipe. A simple silver soldering job and the pipe fastens from the blower valve to the hollow stay that goes all the way through the boiler and blows steam up the chimney to draw the fire. I think it's time to test this turret that I've made. I've connected the air line and I'm feeding a bit of pressure into the boiler. So the blower valve works, the whistle valve works and both of the injector steam valves work. And as I've mentioned before, I intend to fit two live steam injectors to this engine, and I prefer the injector steam valves for each injector to be next door to each other. And as you can clearly see, they are in this installation. Back now to the waterworks job. And what is this, I hear you ask? Well, I suppose it is a water combination interface featuring a feed to the clack valve and a feed to the bypass valve. As this is visible on the footplate, I wanted it to look, well, interesting. I didn't just want a block of metal with holes in it. It's all silver soldered together and I used two PM Research elbows and the idea is it's going to fasten in place like this. And from the PM Research elbows will be extension pipes and this pipe is the one that's going to connect the combining block to the bypass valve. And here's the finished pipe assembly to the bypass valve and I'm using some Loctite 542 to seal the thread where it screws into the PM Research elbow. So how do I know that this pipe is going to end up pointing in the right direction? Well it didn't, it pointed in entirely the wrong direction. So I had a choice, I could use shim washers, which I didn't want to do, or using my one inch belt sander, I could remove some metal from the end of the elbow. And once I did that, the pipe was in the correct position to connect it to the bypass valve. So here's the finished unit, and it looks a bit strange, it looks like some sort of a mechanical monster from a 50s sci-fi film. But once it's in position and painted, it should be okay. In this clip I'm securing the bypass valve to the tank. Before I can test this all in one combining unit I need to connect a pipe from here to here. This is the balancing pipe from the tank. And the original one was a real mess, it was very badly kinked and it actually rubbed against the wheel. So I made sure that this didn't rub against the wheel by first of all making one end of it, bending it to shape, then cutting it to size and only then did I silver solder the fitting on the other end. I'm not using the horrible thin walled copper pipe that was originally fitted to this engine, I'm using some thicker copper brake piping. And according to one viewer, copper brake pipe like this is not available in the USA. Now I have continuity of water between the tanks owing to the two balancing pipes. It's time to paint this small combination unit thing that I made. On steam engines, a lot of things look very good in brass and copper. But you can get too much of a good thing. Too much brass and copper is not good. Sometimes it's a good idea to paint things black, like red doors. If you're too young, you probably missed that gag, but never mind. I'm filling the tanks with water, and for that, as usual, I'm using a small funnel in the top of one of the tanks. I'm having a look underneath the engine while I'm doing this, because I want to make sure that it's not just running out of the bottom. And it doesn't, I do not have a leak. So first of all, I'm going to try the hand pump. And because my combination unit also feeds water to the bypass valve, I need to make sure that the bypass valve is fully closed when using the hand pump, otherwise all the water I pump with the hand pump will just reappear out of the pipe on the end of the bypass valve. Just like on the original design, I silver soldered a long pipe on the end of the bypass valve. And now it's time to see if everything works. The bypass valve is open, and the engine is running steadily on compressed air. And here, where I'm pointing, you can see there's water squirting out of the end of this pipe. This was the pipe that I soldered in place to the bypass valve, pretty much like it was originally, except this is a thicker pipe. And when I shut the valve, 
water stops coming out of the pipe and goes into the boiler. You don't really have to have a pipe like this to indicate whether it's working or not, but it's good to know when water's either been pumped into the boiler or just recirculated back to the tank. So I just sat at the bench watching this happen, ruminating over the problems that I've had with this engine. And it's a never-ending stream of minor problems, and it's just carelessness. I cannot fault the Chinese manufacturer. I can fault the Chinese assembly and fitting, though, on a large scale. For instance, it came as no surprise to me when I connected the water system up and used the hand pump that the union from the hand pump to the side of the tank leaked continuously and it only needed tightening with a socket set. But why should I, the end user, i.e. the customer, have to do this? Surely this should have been done at the factory and I can go on. There were major problems as well really looking back. The main one being with the suspension. The suspension was set really solid and when I pressed down on the back of the engine, the front wheel lifted off the track. Not what you want when you're on a raised railway track pulling passengers on a Sunday afternoon. As I slackened off the suspension to make it actually work, then I realised why the suspension was so solid in the first place. It was set that way because there's a design fault. Most miniature steam locomotives have two running boards down the side, but this design has a running board that is a flat sheet of metal, with holes cut in strategic places to allow things to clear, but the holes weren't big enough so that when you rock the engine from side to side, the big end fouled the plate underneath and then the engine locked up and jammed solid. Oh yeah, and the coupling rods also fouled the running boards, but I put all that right, it wasn't exactly rocket science. The clack's leaking a little bit, so that fixed it. Good tip there, use an Allen key just to clear it to get rid of any debris that's holding the ball off the seat. Still no sign of any water, or is there? Just a minute, I think I can see some water in the bottom nut. Yes, there's some water in the bottom nut, and that's not really taking too long, so the crosshead pump is working fine. I've got about 50 psi in the boiler, so at least I know that the crosshead pump will pump against pressure in the boiler. I also tried the hand pump, and that pumps against pressure in the boiler too, so it's all looking rather good at the moment. All of the steam fittings are English. I bought them from Blackgates Engineering, and coincidentally, they are made by a man called Chris English, and he is English, and he lives near Wakefield in West Yorkshire in the north of England. Chris's father, Don English, and his brother, David English, make injectors and safety valves, as well as just about everything else in the Jubilee fittings range of steam fittings. These fittings are simple, not complicated at all, and more importantly, they work, which is more than I can say for the fittings that originally came with the engine. To conclude this episode called Waterworks, this is a close-up of the hand pump in the tank. And as you can see, when I open the bypass valve, the water comes straight back at the hand pump, and quite a generous amount of water. So that's all working very well indeed. And when I shut the bypass valve, the water is going into the boiler. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.